are so many stereotypes leveled against women, mothers in Nigeria. You know, in several parts of the world they exist, but we're going to be focusing here in Nigeria. From questions from when you get married, they're asking, when are you going to get pregnant? When are you going to have a baby? And then you get pregnant and you get so much advice as to don't do this, don't do that. You have a baby and they're asking, how did you have your baby? Did you have your baby via cesarean section? Or did you have your baby by pushing your baby? Questions on how you want to raise your child. There would probably be no more, no time in your life when you receive more unsolicited advice than when you become a mother. But the truth is that the moment a baby is born, a mother is also born, and mothers should be allowed to transition into this process as they deem fit. No two stories are the same, and we seek to highlight the journey of several women. We'll be starting this series titled Things No One Told You About Motherhood, and our first interview today is with Abanum Laura. She's a creative director of Laura and Mo, and she's also a fashion designer. Her story is quite a tear-jerking one, but I promise you, as this series will show you, no two stories are the same, no two journeys are the same, Mothers are superheroes and they must be respected. I present to you Abanum Laura. <laughs> Laura Agum. I am a mother, a fashion designer, and a creative director of Laura Mo. Fashion has always been my passion, like it's always something I've always wanted to do. Right from when I was a child, I would make beautiful clothes for my baby dolls and all of that. I've actually felt like that was like my purpose. When I first started, I wasn't taught anything about fashion. I actually taught myself everything I knew up to the point of going to fashion school, but even before then, I had had customers, I had things running. My journey to motherhood was something that I've always dreamt about, something I've always talked about. Like Being a mother is something I've always wanted. It's, I can't even tell you how many times I dreamt about it or how it would be. And then it happened. I got pregnant and it was, I don't know, it was everything I, I, I didn't even know existed. I heard you actually threw up, but I didn't know it was going to be that bad. I had severe nausea. Like, I couldn't put anything down. I would vomit virtually most throughout the day, so I was just lying down. I couldn't even take water. Sometimes I wake up like two o'clock just to have a little sip of water in the night. Then I know there's nothing in my stomach at all, so I, I won't risk train up. I lost 14 kg. That's how much I lost while I was pregnant for the first five months. For five months, I was down. I was virtually lying down. I was a shadow of myself. I couldn't do anything. All, everything I dreamt of, the maternity wear, I was going to wear, I couldn't wear any of them. Like I even said I was going to make. I, I was even thinking of opening a maternity line from being pregnant, but I couldn't do any of those. It wasn't what I imagined. A lot went through my mind, like, I felt like, I felt like I'd lost everything and I wasn't going to ever be the person I used to. I lost myself along the line. I couldn't recognize the woman I saw in the mirror. What I've always dreamt of wasn't going to be the way I'd imagined it. I was like, can I rewrite this story? Is it something I can do? Just taking pictures, dressing up and taking pictures. I tried. Makeup couldn't even 
cover it up. I had imagined, oh, I, I've seen a lot of fabulous mom on the internet. How do they do it? Why is my own different, you know? I remember crying to my mom, telling her, you know, I'm a lazy person. But I can't even walk now. I can't do anything right now. This is not me. You know me, I'm all about my work and I can't even walk, I can't stand up, I'm a lazy person. I thought I was the one that was weak, that was what I thought. I, 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 I didn't feel like it was a pregnancy that was bringing me down. I thought I, thought I was the weak one. Because, you know, as soon as other people have it easier. So people say, now you first get belly, and at twins you carry. Some people even said, oh, you must be carrying a boy, the way you are acting. I found myself trying to be stronger than I was actually feeling because I didn't want to even burden people with the way I was feeling. I didn't want people to say nasty things to me. So that was how, that was how I felt. I didn't go to labor. That was another thing. You know how people look at mothers that had CS. I went to labor, but I ended up in an emergency CS. At first, I think CS is something I always wanted to do, but I couldn't say it because I felt like if I say it, CS is looked down on, but I felt it was safer for me. I didn't want my baby to go through any bed trauma. My mom is um, a midwife. She's been one for 35 years. So she told me, to tell the doctor to check my um, my pelvic that she thinks I have an android pelvic that is smaller, so I may not be able to actually bet vaginally. So I told the doctor. He felt like because I I actually told him about CS before, so he felt like I was saying it because I wanted to have CS, and I think they don't do casual CS. So he was he he said he checked and said I was okay. But my due date passed, and then they induced me, and I, I wasn't progressing. So I was just going through all the pain, but I wasn't pro progressing, I wasn't dilating. The monitor, the reason to monitor my baby, it, it showed that my baby was already in distress. So I had to have an emergency CS. After I told some people I had CS, I would hear things like, oh, next time you have a natural birth, oh, next time you give birth like a Hebrew woman. And I, I had to grow a tissue, and I told them, I don't want to. My next delivery, I would want it to be an elective CS. I don't want to go through labor. I actually have chosen CS, and this is what I want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say motherhood has changed everything about me. I've become more intentional about the things I do, how I live, what I eat, because I will be here for a very long time for my child and, you know, for our siblings that would come along the way. So I've been more intentional. It has made me more conscious. It has made me want to do more. It has given me more drive to do better because I want one day for my daughter to be proud of me to say I don't want her to look for an inspiration out there I want her to see me and I'll be her inspiration and then she'll say oh my mother did this for me my mother left this for me this legacy for me that's what I want some of the unexpected changes that motherhood brought Mama was, I would say, I was expecting so much from what I had heard and what I had seen. I expected that I was going to add weight, but I felt like it wasn't going to be so bad because I already lost a lot. So even if I gained weight, I, it wouldn't be that bad. But I felt like even if I got so fat, it wouldn't be such a bad thing. But when I had, I still had insecurities because I had stretch marks here and there I never used to have those because I, 
had always really been on the slim side. I remember looking at the mirror and I just like, who's this woman? So much has changed. And going forward, two months postpartum, I had breakouts, pimples all over my face. There was so much, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, is anything else, is there any other thing that's going to happen now? I couldn't even look at the mirror. Like, what is this? It's, it's not over yet. I still have to go through these things, even with my baby on my hand. But I started looking at them like my stripes, the things that have made me, that have brought me up to this stage of being a mother. It's not, it's not a bad thing that I have those things, but I have my baby. It is what it is, what everything. When I first opened up about my struggles on Instagram, first off, I was starting my business up again. I felt like I needed to explain why I'd been away for so long. I wouldn't just disappear and come back and expect everybody to be waiting for me. So I felt like I needed to explain. So I put out the post and then I remember writing post and delete underneath. And then someone came in and told me, why did you write post and delete? You should, it's an inspiring story for people to learn from. It's not something you should be ashamed of. I know I was scared of what the reaction I was going to get. I felt like people were going to say, naive first born. And I was right. But even at that, I got a lot of encouraging messages, and messages that made me know that I wasn't alone and it could be anybody just that nobody's talking about it nobody's actually telling you how it felt leading up to the moment they had their child in their arms you just see the children and everything is okay the world is fine but nobody talks about what happened leading up to that moment <coughs> the things no one told me about motherhood one is the vomiting, the severe nausea and vomiting. The spitting, I would carry a bottle everywhere. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that. I don't know if they hide it. And the sleepless night, I didn't know it was this horrible. I don't sleep. I don't know how it's possible for someone to be alive for five months without sleeping. Like, I'm alive, that's just it. And then no one tells you that your life changed. No one tells you that your relationship with your husband will change. It's definitely going to be different. It's not just the both of you anymore. And at first, when you become a mother, you actually become a little bit selfish. You find yourself concentrating on your child. You find your whole world start to re revolve around this little person, and then there's no space for the husband. But I think when you have someone that is patient, you start to tell yourself the truth. There was someone before this person. This, it's not just about you and the baby. You made this baby with someone and let the person share your joy. Let the person co-parent. Let people help you, you know? I think that's when I did that, that's when I started relaxing. The breakouts reduced because I felt like it was a stress, you know, of everything, trying to be the perfect mom, trying to make sure everything is okay with her, trying to make sure that she's always happy. But now I'm letting other people in. I'm letting my husband share, you know. I'm letting every other person you know, be a part of her life now. My husband is an amazing person, first of all an amazing man and an amazing husband because in all of this he never made me feel alone he never for once i never saw in his eye like he saw me different like he saw me different from the woman i was when we just met i never i never felt ugly in his eyes he would tell me it's not that serious as expected now you're supposed to have this kind of things it's 
it's, it's part of the motherhood. That's, that's what he tells me. So I never felt like I needed to do anything extra to make him happy. And I would say being a mother actually makes you bold. It makes you feel like there is nothing you cannot do. There's no, there's nothing standing in your way. I am more outspoken now. I'm more expressive now. So, I would say it's a good thing. <laughs> Motherhood is an indescribable feeling. I've never felt this kind of love ever. I will do anything to keep my baby. I will do anything to continue to have her in my life. I used to tell people that if you don't believe in God, have a child. And then you see that this is God at work. It's beautiful. So I would like to encourage all mothers out there. No two journeys are the same. The fact that mine was hard doesn't mean that yours will be. And even if yours was hard, it's not the end of the world. You can always pick up. That you have stretch marks, those are your stripes from having your beautiful human in your hands. That you added weight, no big deal. You are still beautiful. <coughs> My name is Solu Laura Agom. I am a fashion designer, creative director of Laura Emo. I am a wife and my favorite job ever is a mother. I don't think there's any greater feeling than being a mother. It is so beautiful and I thank God every day for making me one. <laughs> to enjoy more of this our Ogunge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.